Some violins cost sixty dollars, some ten thousand, some millions. But why do they cost so much? Hi, I'm Timothy, and as a violinist, I'm going to be answering why a violin like this costs millions of dollars, euros, renminbi. Throughout the centuries of violin making, there has been a few litiers that we've really looked up to and called them the gold standards of the violin world. And personally, for me, when given the option, I prefer to play on a vintage instrument. But instruments like this, which is 300 years old, are really expensive. And even if you had the cash, why would you purchase it on merely just a wooden box? Wouldn't you rather put that money into that nice fancy condo in the middle of Manhattan? Or maybe an old collection of vintage comics. And does it sound that much better? Well, believe it or not, there are several reasons that contribute to the hefty price tag of these special instruments. But before we go to those reasons, let's put this back into my violin case because I feel very uncomfortable just holding it around like this. I'm back. Well, let's start with the most obvious reason. It's a rare piece of art. There aren't many of them, and there's a finite amount of them left on this earth. Let's take Antonio Stradivarius, for example. He's probably the most well-known violin maker in history. He made about 1,100 instruments, and only about 250 violins survive to this day. Just like really rare paintings. The less we have, the more money that they'll go for. Actually, for many wealthy investors, investing in a Stradivarius or another rare instrument is a really smart way to diversify their portfolio. Since the 1990s, many of these rare instruments have tripled in value, and funny enough, they've actually even beaten the world stock market from a year-to-year -year gain. Next up is the reputation of these instruments, something like a Stradivarius, which has been just so popular in everyday culture through the media, through television, through the internet. Most people who have any knowledge of the classical music industry have heard about Stradivarius and know about its craftsmanship, its value, its rarity, and the quality of sound as well. Next up is sound quality. Now, I can personally tell the difference between something like a Stradivarius and a Guarneri del Gesù compared to most other violins. And that's because they sound so incredibly good. They stand out and nobody knows exactly why. Maybe it has something to do with the recipe of the varnish, or it's asymmetrical, or the type of wood that they were using, or maybe it's just purely because it had time to age and marinate. But not all of them are made equal as well. Let's take Stradivarius or Strads, for example. We consider that the instruments that he made from 1700 to 1720 as the golden period, which means that it has the most precious and the most hyped up uh, violins that he ever made. And definitely there are some out there that are not good violins at all, but they're really old and vintage. And this brings the question of, can you tell the difference between a modern instrument and a vintage instrument? Well, I don't have that answer for you, but I do have a video comparing a $60 violin to a $6 million Strad. But in all seriousness, uh, there also is a gray zone between really finely made modern instruments and some of these legendary Stradivariuses or Guarneri del Jesus. There's actually been a test where people were blindfolded and uh, they listened to one Stradivarius or an old instrument compared to a modern instrument. And I think the test said that they actually preferred the modern instrument. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised because modern instruments have the luxury of having really good technology. We've learned from trial and error. Um, there's science behind it. We can understand sound waves, what works constructually uh, and so forth. So there has to be an instrument that's made today that is superior to ones in the past because there are just more resources available to use to perfecting what works and what doesn't. And that being said, a great violin is a great violin. It really does take skill to be able to play on any instrument, whether that be a really fine modern instrument, whether that be a really good Stradivarius or whether that be just any other instrument. They don't play on its own, and a really great violinist that has tremendous skill can really bring out the best out of each instrument. And that's being said, to be honest, a $6 million violin by someone who doesn't have the skills can make it sound like a $60 one. So this next reason is not about why it adds to the cost of the instrument, but it's added to why these instruments are so prized, especially for us as musicians. Oftentimes, uh, receiving a loan of one of these rare instruments is one way to recognize an artist's talents, uh, achievements. Uh, think of it as a prize, um, kind of like a diamond ring, but I guess you wouldn't perform with a diamond ring. 
for a young artist like me, having the opportunity to have a loan of a rare instrument is a huge honor, and it raises our profile to promoters, to organizations, to the general public as well, that uh, organizations and foundations are willing to trust us uh, to perform on these rare instruments that have such a long history of wonderful violinists and other stories are associated with it. The other thing about these instruments is that they are very sensitive to the way you play on them. I've learned that a great instrument will teach us how to produce certain sounds. And the very best violinists out there, name one yourself, uh, they probably had performed on one of these rare instruments at some point of their career. I know some of them play on modern instruments, or maybe not some of the household names like Stradivarius, but maybe a viom or a galliano or a guananini, but they're still very expensive. The violin themselves tend to be extremely well taken care of by the artists themselves, uh, the luthiers, the foundation, or the organization. So that really helps keep it in great condition. When I have to take it outside and walk around the streets, I make sure that that violin is in a very protective case. My case is actually made out of carbon fiber, so it's very strong. I make sure to guard it with my life. I make sure it's snug. I don't let anybody touch it. I don't let it out of my sight. We also make sure that we bring it into the shop very often to make sure that the sound post is straight, to get a cleaning, to make sure that there aren't any loose seams, to make sure there aren't any cracks, uh, to fix any blemishes that we have might have cause because we are actively playing on it. So that's why these rare instruments can really go for five, six, seven, ten, sixteen million dollars. I think that was what the record was for a violin. So currently on loan to me, I'm performing on a 1717 Windsor Weinstein Stradivarius violin on loan to me from the Canada Council for the Arts Musical Instrument Bank. And if you want to hear what it sounds like in a performance, click on one of these two boxes I'm performing on that violin. And if you like this video, why don't you subscribe as well and maybe drop me a like, comment below, follow me on Instagram because I get lonely. Well, until next time, thank you for watching.